So in this episode, we'll continue with the Kiance microscope, looking at the threads on the watch project, as well as the thread mill I used to create the threads. I'm uh, back with Sean from Kiance, and this time we're going to look at the threads that I worked on for the watch body project. Now, I have some test parts that I used to get the thread right, and we're going to start with that. And then we'll look at some version of the watch. I don't remember which version this is. I don't remember if it's the final version or not, but we'll take a look at that. So he has uh, the, uh, the watch body part of the, uh, the test sample uh, on the machine. You can see it uh, right there. And uh, on the microscope, I should say. And what we're looking at on the screen are the threads. Yeah. And if we want to get a, a different perspective on this, because we're not really able to see the threads themselves, this is where the tilting comes into play for us. Right, because it's much easier to see and envision the three-dimensional aspect of mm -hmm. it. So it's much easier to see that these are threads that are cut in. Yep. And that's the end of the, the thread that's cut in. Yep. Okay, so if we zoom in on that. Sure, yeah, and what I'll do is I'll actually split the screen into two. Whoops, we'll do the opposite direction here, horizontal. This way we still have that macro view mm. that we know about, and if we want to, then we can still, on the bottom half, zoom into this. So we don't get lost. Yep, exactly. So maybe we'll stick right there for now. Mm -hmm. And again, we have more of that depth. Yeah, let's keep uh, the this part, yeah, right there. Okay. That's good. Uh, more of that depth of field limitation here. So we're going to do the same image stacking, but I'm going to try and use some uh, software capabilities to mitigate some of that glare. Mm. You can see in that viewing window on the bottom right hand corner of the screen how close my lens is to the sample now. Oh yeah, I mean, it's so cool being able to see that because that's a camera. You can tell because right. it's pointing at you. Yep. Yep. So I can't use those fancy adapters. So we're going to use HDR again to try and mitigate some of that glare. Okay. So looking at this, I can see here's the, the valley of the thread. Mm -hmm. That's clearly where it ends. And then this looks like the separation between the two threads. And it looks like it wavers around a little bit, perhaps sure. because of uh, the, uh, it's very thin. Yep. Can we look at the, uh, the map, the yeah, 3D sure. map? Oh, <laughs> that's cool. Uh, last time we were looking at it with artificial colors, right? Oh yeah, you can throw that on. Well, I mean, looking oh. at it with the real colors, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that I'm noticing right away is that this is doing a much better job of resolving the the angle or the slope mm -hmm. of, of the walls. Yeah, um, it's a larger feature. You know, it's easier for us to catch. Oh, that's true. It's it's much deeper than the the letters that we were looking at. Mm -hmm. So we can measure that, right? Sure. Yeah. You can go to the same profile measurement here and use my handy perpendicular line measurement tool. So, you want to measure the angle? Um, no, I was thinking of the, the depth. The depth, cool. We can do that too. Yeah, so. this is interesting because it's at an angle down there. Yeah. Let's think about how we're going to do that here. That's what we want to. Yeah, so what we'll do here is we're going to do a, a line. Ah, uh, got it. To point measurement there. Okay, cool. I'll have to check the CAD to see what yeah. it says. And I'll save that for you so you can reference that okay. again. That is really cool. Yeah. Now, when you have the artificial colors, mm -hmm. the colors are showing depth, right. different colors. Yep. So the Got it. high points are going to be in red, low points in blue. I see. So when you're looking at it straight on like this, you can get the, the depth information that you couldn't get without looking at it at an angle. Yep, exactly. And you can even, <laughs> you know, make that even more apparent. Oh, way. so we can we look at the profile view with the... Okay, so this is just what it looks like without the texture. Right. This is almost like your, your point cloud of data in a way. Yep, yep. That's very cool. Yeah. Uh, let's um, let's see what else. Some the, let's take a look and see if we can find the start of the thread. Okay. Let's see. 
Yeah, and I'm not sure that's going to be... I forget uh, where that is. It may be hard to see. Yeah, you can try. Yeah, it might be easier for me to look at it first. Sure. And see if I can figure it out. I have to take my glasses off because I'm nearsighted. Yeah, that's why I usually use a microscope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we can try. Uh, we can also just do that okay. on sure. the when we switch to the actual part. Okay. Do we want? Yeah, let's take a look at this one. All right. Uh, the difference between them is that this one has threads with uh, plenty of room underneath uh, for the thread to end. Okay. This one has a hard stop because it represents the the back. Okay. And, um, oh, and it looks like we got lucky because it looks like, <laughs> I think that's the end right there. Let's get this a bit more focus there. Or maybe not. No, that's not the end. Nope. Let's see. What if we rotate this Oop. around? But it is the beginning right there. Is it? You see that? Yeah, one of the things you're seeing here, actually, that's a good thing to look at. Um, so these are burrs. Yep. This is where, you know, I have not come and cleaned this up. And so you have places where the end mill pushed the metal away mm. and didn't completely cut it away. And so that's a good example of a burr. Now, this is aluminum. Okay. The actual watch parts are stainless steel. And of course, they have different cutting characteristics because aluminum tends to be much softer and gummier. Oh! I don't even know if that's the... Is that a burr? Yeah. I it, guess it is, yeah. It probably is. Um, I don't know why it's sitting there on the side, but that's pretty interesting. Yeah. And then you can see there, there are other bits of, of uh, metal still there. Mm-hmm. So obviously I need to figure out a good way to clean out the, the metal. If we go down here a little bit. Sure. I think there was another burr, you know, like right along here. So maybe we can take a look at that. In this area here? Uh, right here. Oh, right there. Okay. Yeah, we can... yeah, it definitely looks more like your traditional burr there, I suppose. Right, and then once we have that in focus, then we can look at it at different angles. Sure. You know, what would be cool, and I don't know if you have this feature, is to be able to do this multiple depth of field at different tilt angles mm -hmm. and create a three-dimensional version. Well, I've been asking for that for years. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to do. Yeah. I get that. But yeah, that, that definitely looks like a burr. So if we look at it from a different angle. Sure. Um, that should be become uh, pretty clear. Yeah, if we can... yeah, like from the side a little bit more. Yeah. Let's see. I'm trying to think about which way to come at it here. Uh, That's yeah, like right there. And then zoom in there. Yeah, let's say that. Yeah, see how gnarly that is? Mm -hmm. That's typically what you see with a bird. It's like rounded up almost. I mean, it's pushing the metal yeah. away. Yeah. And then you see these patterns here? Mm -hmm. uh, that's because of the face mill that I used uh, to uh, clean off the front side. The interesting thing about the face mill is that if you look at it in person, it looks pretty shiny and clear. Mm -hmm. But this obviously <laughs> isn't. This tells yeah. a different story. Yeah, definitely. That's very cool. Let's take a look at the the, wa the actual watch back. Okay. What? And now we're switching to stainless steel. Okay. What's interesting on this part? It's the real part. Okay. Any particular areas? Well, actually, this is a good thing right here because uh, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, what we want to do is rotate this so that we can see the end of the um, uh, the end of the thread, right there. Okay, so if we rotate a little bit more so we don't have the glare, or maybe we can use yeah, the other uh, diffuser. Yeah, let's try that. That's not a bad idea. I think 
The best one would be the, we call it the angle diffuser. We use at any time we're tilting the microscope, and like we're doing now. And when working distance, this is as much a challenge. Right, and this is a smaller part now. Okay. We can brighten that up a little bit, yeah. too. Yeah, you can really see the difference with that diffuser. Mm -hmm. So if we zoom in a little bit more. Sure. But yeah, zoom out is it right there. That's good. Yep, and then move it over a little bit. Okay, so there's some really interesting things here. So do we have, we don't have the full depth of, yeah. yeah. We'll we zoom in just a little bit more. Yeah, then stack. Okay, let's center this up a little bit. Maybe a little bit further to that way to get the tip. No, that's okay, because okay. again, um, there are several things going on here. One is this is the floor. And so I need to make sure that the thread mill does not hit the floor. Mm. That's not a good thing. So this tells me roughly how much distance I had from the floor, which I was able to tell from the simulations. But the other thing that I found interesting here is these burrs here. Mm. They're really small burrs, but they are still burrs. Yeah. So I didn't know they were there. Mm. Now we know. <laughs> now we know. So it's it's uh, very cool to see that. Is that Im is that have any effect on the watch and how it functions at all? Or I have no idea. Okay. Uh, I'd have to look at a commercial watch. Yeah. I think I have one, a commercially made one in. Mm -hmm. I mean, not a high end one, uh, in my shop. So I'll have to go look for that, and if I find it, we can look at that one. Sure. Okay. Um, I think that's. Let's see, is there anything else I want to look at? I think that's what I wanted to look at on here. Okay. Because uh, this, this uh, as I say, was super hard to see under the microscope oh, that I, I have. It's reflective. It's small. It's, you know, it, there's a lot of geometry to it. It's it's, it's, it's large in diameter. Yep. Hard yeah. to fixture it. I, I get that. Yeah. And so my stereo... Um, did not zoom in far enough, mm -hmm. and then the other one that I have that can go in far enough, um, you have to constantly change the focus, and you never get enough in focus. Yeah. So this is really awesome. Quick trick. Yep. Okay. What's then, next? Uh, look at the end mill. Okay. Let's see. Give me that back. Nice. Uh, big or small? This one. So that's the uh, thread mill that I used to cut those threads. Okay. Oh, I can see that now. Yeah, so if you start by looking from the top. Top up. Okay. Um, then we can see the thread profile. Sure. And if you rotate it just a little bit, we want to have like oh, I see. Uh, like, that surface uh, be flat. horizontal. Yeah, or that one there. That works. Okay. Yep. Let's see. Uh, it rotates. Uh, which way is it? So it rotates this way. So this is the cutting edge over there. Uh, and so you see there's some back clearance and other angles going on. And I'm not a even close to being an expert on how you 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 make these but you can see there's a lot going on there's a lot going on it's very complex yeah <laughs> that never gets old it never does i've been doing this for 13 years and it's exciting every time i hope you enjoyed this episode uh, please comment below give me a thumbs up subscribe and i will see you next time